Hello there. Welcome to the abandoned mining town of Cerro Gordo. As you may be able to tell, it is very cold up here right now. And you know, living in a ghost town is challenging on the best days. And in the winter, it can just become extremely challenging. Right now, our road is full of snow. You know, my truck won't make it all the way up here. The pipes are frozen. Not that we had much running water to begin with. The propane isn't getting all the way to the stove. The internet is down and I am freezing. <laughs> and so in this video, what I want to do is show you guys a little bit what it's like living up here during the winter. Winters at Cerro Gordo are complicated. On the best days, it's the most beautiful the town ever is. The first snow hits the ground and all is quiet. Any of the imperfections in the hillside are covered up by this beautiful blanket. The Sierras across the valley are snow-capped, providing so much depth and character to an already breathtaking view. The snow twinkles as the light reflects off of it. Each building suddenly has more character. There's animal prints all through the town. You know, proof that wildlife is in fact here. It feels like the world is put on pause for a moment and I can truly just enjoy the space that I'm in. You know, it's a winter wonderland, a playground almost all to myself. But on the worst days, winters at Cerro Gordo can be hell on earth. The temperatures drop into the low teens. The wind can pick up to 60 or 70 miles per hour. Frozen ice will blow horizontally, piercing any exposed skin. The pipes freeze and crack, leaving you with a cold cabin with no way to wash dishes or even yourself. The wind wakes you up like this unwelcome alarm clock as it snakes its way through the walls of the cabin. The wood you'd like to use to heat the house is frozen from the night before and just will not start. You know, no amount of layers seem to stop the cutting of the wind. On those days, you end up spending most of the day indoors, you know, hoping that the building you're in isn't blown over by the wind. That playground can become a prison. But when those days are past, they definitely make you appreciate the things we take for granted. The heat, the running water, the sanity. And each winter up here, I learn a little bit more about how to have more of the first days and less of the second. Each winter reminds me of the things I need to work on when the snow melts to make the next even more comfortable. All right, so as you can see, it's currently 14 degrees outside and 27 degrees inside. So the first order of business is getting warm and we do not have any central heat here. So that means wood. So that means before the day can really start, you gotta get the fire going. So I was trying to cook breakfast in there on the stove, and I think our propane is out. It's cold out. So I gotta see if we have more propane to hopefully be able to make breakfast. Otherwise, no stove. Nothing's easy up here. It's like everything runs out right when it's the most difficult. those closed because snow is the enemy of all buildings it can create moisture and rot so we come over here Ugh. luckily we do have some propane so then it's back out oh it's one of the drifts kind of deep Whew. all right so typically you know you come in here i start pouring some water making my breakfast but uh the water is out on the truck that we get the water it's having brake issues and the tanks are empty. So there's no water. Uh, the propane isn't working. So I end up using a lot of 
disposable goods, which I don't love, but it's kind of the only way to get going in the morning. So that's what you gotta do. And so if the pipes are frozen out there, the tank, that obviously means that any toilet is out of commission too. No water. So that means trekking up the hill to the old outhouse. And so before the day begins, you gotta figure out your heat. You gotta figure out your breakfast. You gotta figure out your bathroom. This is a uh, dog shop porch. As you can see, the snow hasn't really dumped in that much, but it is windy. This is what it's like in the winter here. That way. You know, sometimes I feel like wind only exists to remind us that things can always get worse, you know? Other elements, you're like, oh, I get it. The fire can keep me warm. The floods can keep some animals. Wind, it's like, oh, you think 15 degrees is bad? How about we throw in some 50 mile per hour winds? It always get worse. Got a problem, it appears that the door is over to the assay office. A lot of snow is gonna get in there. You can see the drifts. I'm not gonna measure, but that's the drift. So you see just the drift of snow. This is not good that this door got left open. Sometimes visitors come. So that's a problem. So a lot of times right now we have self-guided tours people sometimes leave the door open but snow inside of buildings equals moisture inside of buildings equals rot so i'm gonna have to get all this snow out of here get this door closed so i'm getting more coming in that could be the end of a lot of stuff so that's a real bummer it's cold but we just can't have moisture in here because that's going to lead to rotting long term so i'll come back and do this, but let's survey what else is going on. You know, there's out a window. And then. Check out the basement, see what's going on there. Wonder if anything's accumulating inside of it. We'll go check it out. Wind is dying down. It's actually clearing up. Walk the plank. Oh yeah. Inside, got some drifts. Definitely got some drifts. There's our basement. So that's a bummer because we want to start framing soon. But you can't frame, you've got a lot of moisture down here. So not only now do we have to wait till it's out snowing, we've got to wait till this snow gets out of here. Either shovel it out or wait for it to melt because we don't want to be trapping any moisture anywhere when we're framing and warp the boards. You can see like up here is just ice. So. I'll make my way over to the church, which looks like the door is open, which is extremely bad. Nice deep snow. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. That's my knee. Bow to my knee here in this drift. As you can tell, getting out of here right now wouldn't be the best idea. Ah. The wind starts whipping. Whoa. These are pretty deep drifts. Whoa. Now we're here. This is going to be a huge problem. This 
is Cerro Gordo in this picture. You can see the icicles just blown onto one side of these. Wild. Alright. Let's see how bad it is. I gotta get this door shut so no more gets in here. You see it's just oh that window's completely busted out. <sighs> yep. So all this is gonna have to come out. Gotta shovel this out today before it starts melting and ruining everything. And we've done so much work on this on this building that we can't have this moisture in here. Moisture is the enemy of any building. This is even open. Come on. This is the movie theater right now. Not what you want to be it like, but this ice on here is pretty close. All right, I got that close from the inside, but the wind has taken off the hinges a little bit, so that's gonna need some repair, like most buildings around here. You can tell it's just a frozen kind of arctic right now. And the reason that these latches exist is to latch them closed so the wind can't do this. You know, all of these are now gonna have to be swept out. So again, no moisture comes in. And I'm gonna have to sweep it now so that way the wind doesn't rip this just off its hinges. It's a battle up here. Let's go see if the bunkhouse is all right. You can tell out there that it's really about to clear up, which is nice, at least for a second. Yeah, I may not see the valley all day. So over here, some big drifts. You know, so it's just accumulating. Luckily, this door is closed. That door is closed. That out horse door, kind of closed. So. I don't know. Feels like it's closed on the inside, but that's impossible. Unless somebody came through the back door, or this this handle is frozen. Well, let's see if we can get into the back door. Just as quick as the cleared up kind of clouds are back. Woo! I don't think we're getting into this door. Oh. All right, we got some clouds opening up. Might make it a beautiful sunset. Can't get into this building right now. Front door seems to be locked, back door's frozen shut. So we'll have to come out to the bunkhouse later on. It's pretty out now with clouds clearing up a little bit. It's cold though. A couple days ago, we were totally wiped of any way to communicate with the outside world. All right, so about the internet, uh, we just heard from Lone Pine Communications and they have a tower above the town, about a half a mile. So Scotty and I are about to get into the Kubota and try to make it up there. Quite a bit of snow has fallen since then. So if you look down, you know, there's a decent amount. 
Boda. They said that maybe the wind blew down some of the pa some of the antennas. So I think let's go check out the tower. All right, so good job, Kubota. Made it up. It appears. It looks pretty clean. Our internet up here is relayed by a tower that's a solar powered tower. So it's been so cloudy, so windy, so snowy, so overcast that it just lost power. So we're back here, internet still wasn't working. I have a day job that very much requires the internet. You know, if I don't have the internet, I can't work, I can't pay for this whole town and things like that. That meant uh, packing up my truck after dark uh, to slip and slide down the hill to Keeler which is a little town eight miles down our dirt road where I have a little trailer that has Starlink. And my idea was, listen, Starlink just needs power. You know, we're not gonna deal with the solar situation anymore. So I went down there, grabbed Starlink and came back up. <laughs> and uh, much like my very first time coming up here, uh, my truck didn't quite make it all the way into town. Before the day can begins, there's always something, whether it's getting warm, getting water, or in this case, getting internet. Uh, oh, if we got snow on the ground here, yeah, I might have a little bit of an issue getting up because we're not even close to halfway up. So we'll see how this goes. Here's the other problem with the winter. We still have tons of snowpack up in the town and it's about to snow again, but already as that snow melts and comes down, it relives a nightmare from the summer when we had those thousand year floods. This was perfectly smooth maybe a week ago and already the little bit of snow melt that we've had, which isn't much, is trying to turn it back into a ravine. The car's already struggling. I don't know what's going on. I have it in four low, but now it's, I think some type of cable might have gone out because it's saying that. So, it's not the best. It's having this much trouble down this far. I have a lot of trouble trying to get up. The truck's not loving it, but doing a lot better than my old little two wheel drive thing did. This slope's gonna be a fun one when it's all icy. Might be as far as she's gonna go. And reverse down and try it again, but let's see. Take two. No. Didn't get as far as the first time. I need some chains on these tires. It's too deep. You can see that's the railing, so got some pretty deep snow. All right, we'll try to plow with the Kubota a little bit. We'll see now if I can get the truck back up to the house. It's the internet, but it's deep over here. If I wasn't getting through this way, I'm gonna have to go down again, try again. The snow's really coming down. It's wet, cold, windy. Just want to get home. <sighs> well, after all that plowing, this is as close as we're gonna get. You can see there's just like hard ice in her here. Don't have tires on. So, not bad. Not that close. Hopefully, the Starlink works. Otherwise, we still have no internet, but here at least. Whew. You know, to me, one of the hardest things about the winter up here is just eating anything even remotely healthy. You know, it's been a battle since day one here, but the winter makes it that much more difficult. You know, there's snow on the road. I can't go to the grocery store. I end up eating like rice and beans for dinner. And I know that I'm not getting all the nutrients that I need. You know, I'm really trying to make health a priority in 2023. So something I've been drinking every morning is AG1. It's 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food ingredients. And I just take it as like a coverall. You know, I know I'm not getting all the nutrients I need from the rice and beans. So in the morning, 
I just take a scoop, throw it in some water, mix it up, and it's just a guaranteed win. You know, I, it's like the best thing that I can do in under a minute for my health. I've been off coffee for a while now, and it just helps my energy sustain throughout the day. I found that it helps with my sleep, it helps with my digestion, it helps with my immunity. It's just a guaranteed win, like I said. So if you're interested in checking it out, Athletic Greens is giving away five of their travel packs, as well as a year supply of their D3 and K2. All you have to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash ghost town living, and I'll hook that up. And I know a lot of us out there kind of want to make health a big priority this year. And I found this is just a really simple way to do that. So I hope you check it out, athleticgreens.com slash ghost town living. The animals are strangely loving the snow. You know, the alpacas, I think, grew up there, so they just roll around in the snow. The goats are out there frolicking. Heck, even the chickens are there having a good time. So let's go check in on the animals up here at Cerro Gordo. It's the winter, but here are the animals. There's Tofu, Tofu, how are you doing? There's Tofu the goat. She is doing great. We got Elon over there eating some food. Alpacas are coming out. The alpacas seem to love the snow. There's Stony. You're looking great. Trooper, you're looking good too. Chachi, hello, hello. And you guys are just right in your environment in this, aren't you? You wanna let me pet you? Oh, they're getting a little better. That was impossible even a year ago. So inch by inch, oh, maybe not so quick. <sighs> Tofu's escaping, Tofu, come back. You know, I want a guaranteed way to get Tofu back in. <laughs> you know, the sound of that is the sound of where all their food stays. So we're gonna give them some treats. Tofu, there is Tofu. And the sound of that door is gonna get spaghetti, meatball, burrata. They're gonna get them all. So here they are. Oh, no, Tofu, no, or Yvonne, don't go over that. So as you can see, this is spaghetti. She's doing great. Meatball. We actually have chickens now too, and the chickens are actually laying eggs. This is their insulated pen. So that way everybody can stay nice and warm at night. Everybody can go under there. The alpacas up there is over there. We have these heaters that sit in their water tanks and then make sure their water doesn't freeze, which is important. And then other than that, make sure they're fed, make sure everybody's good. Duff, what do you think? <laughs> She's got her winter fur on. Beautiful view and animals and a ghost. So I grew up in Florida and all this snow stuff is relatively new to me. You know, I remember as a kid going skiing for the first time and ending up with a spiral fracture on my leg that left me in a wheelchair just forever. You know, then a couple of years passed, I was like, you know what? I have enough confidence now. I'm gonna try skiing again, only to ski into a frozen lake and get a concussion. So all that to say, me and winter sports don't have the best track record, but I love getting out there. You know, I love just exploring the elements and diving into whatever environment that I'm in. And so if you own a town that has snow, how can you not get out there? All right, so as you can see, it seems to have uh, cleared up a little bit all day. So what I'm gonna try to do is go sledding. If you look right out there, I cut a 55 gallon drum in half. And on the back side of the property, there's a road that just goes and goes and goes. I wanna see how far I can sled down there. Uh, I may sled too far where I need some kind of backup. So I'm gonna bring a tent and a sleeping bag just in case and the drones and maybe uh, if I got, yep, there we go. Maybe an MRE or two just to be safe. But we're gonna pack up and we're gonna try to sled all the way to Death Valley National Park. All right, so we're over here with the Kubota and I was just about to start sledding down here and I put my sled down like an idiot and the wind whipped up, grabbed my sled and sent it halfway down this already. My sled, you can see it down there. It's still taking off on its own. Now it's going even further. See it? If I don't hurry, my sled's gonna be at the bottom of the mountain, which it looks like it already is. 
Well, starting off good, as you can tell, my sled has already made it a big way down the road by itself, which is not ideal. Look at this snow in the background of Death Valley. What an epic adventure. I needed to start to kind of get the speed above, but you see my sled down there. So we're gonna go find it and start going down this road. It is untouched powder right here. So it's looking beautiful. Sliding down the mountain felt like a deep exhale. It was pure play, which is something I haven't done that much of recently. You know, with the cold and the project coming to a halt and everything seeming to break up here, I've been on a constant problem solving mode. And sledding was the first thing I did voluntarily for myself. You know, I think those types of adventures are important. It gives you back that sense of autonomy, like you're in the driver's seat instead of just being reactionary to all the events happening around you. I was able to just forget my problems and appreciate this awesome life I get to live. And I think it's something to remember, you know, especially as things are going wrong. You know, sometimes the best thing to do is to get up, get away from that computer screen and go on an adventure. It might help you solve whatever's bothering you. And plus, you know, we all know how the plot ends when someone gets snowed in and it's all work and no play. Oh. And to be honest, it was a blast. You know, for a very long time, I was just cruising, you know, sitting like this, zooming through these beautiful pinion pines, just kind of watching the world go by. And then a couple miles into it, the snow got a little bit wetter, started crashing a little bit more, and the sun started going down. All right, as you can see, I made it pretty far down here, but now underneath the snow is melting because we're probably closer to Death Valley now than we are to Cerro Gordo. And so my sled, Given that it's not as steep and it's wetter, it's not wanting to go. I mean, stuck. So I thought I was gonna get much, much further. And so I thought I was gonna have to camp. I'm gonna try to look for a mine, you know, maybe to duck into. If not, I'm gonna just have to walk back up. I think with a little bit more snow and a little bit colder temperatures, you could probably make it another mile or so. So the sledding fun ended a little quicker than I would have hoped and it was time to start trekking back to town. And I'm not sure if it was the fun I just had, but I really didn't mind walking. You know, the trees back there were as beautiful as I'd ever seen them. You know, and what I picked up on most on the hike back was just the contrast. You know, below my feet was snow. Ahead of me were these snow-capped mountains. But as I turned around, there was the desert. You know, just laid out as far as I could possibly see. And I love those contrasts. I think our brain is drawn to them in a way. It just breaks us out of the predictable and just helps our soul. The plan at the time of my departure was that Scotty would come down in the Kubota. You know, the Kubota had been doing so well, pick me up and drive me back so I wouldn't have to walk the, you know, three to four to five miles that I've been sledding. Um, unfortunately, that didn't fully work out. Well, since this sledding was kind of a failed mission, I thought I would just text Scotty, see if he could come down in the Kubota. But apparently the Kubota got stuck right by the Omega Tunnel, which is probably two, two and a half miles from here. And if you can see behind me, the sun is setting. It's been a very long walk. 
and uh, very uphill. Look at that. Snow with the desert in the background. What a crazy sight. Well, we need this camping gear after all. <laughs> I'm moving slow in this snow. I got a long ways to go. Look at that. A little portal or stone cabin. <sighs> I have not seen that before. Look at that, I'll have to get home tonight. But till then, I keep trudging. So just as I was mentally preparing for the idea of hiking all the way out of there in the dark or camping overnight, Scotty showed up in the Kubota. Lucky Scotty was able to get this unstuck. So now we gotta get back up this. And uh, sun hasn't yet set, so I think we're gonna be doing all right. And it's gun it. Well, you can't see me, but the snow is a little too deep for the Kubota. So Scotty had it back. I tried to get it unstuck by digging it out. Just bottomed it out. So we gotta wait for the snow to melt a little bit, soften up, come and rip it out with a different vehicle. But you can see even on the way down, it was bottoming out. So going back up, it just centered out. It's so now a pretty long walk back, probably a couple of miles. It's getting cold and dark. All right, just getting back into town after that misadventure. The sledding was great, the getting back is gonna need some brainstorming. Doesn't seem like the Kubota can get through deep, deep snow. So I might need to get myself a used snowmobile or something in order to not have to walk all the way back. Cause that was a long walk. Oh yeah, good three miles or so in. There's icicles all through my beard, but we're back. And we have a pretty fun uh, trail. Now I just gonna go back and get the Kubota once it snow softens up a little bit. <sighs> Another day in paradise. So this adventure that began with these grand ambitions of going all the way down to Death Valley and then getting a ride back uh, turned into going halfway to Death Valley and then hiking about four miles back up to town. But still, it is probably the most fun that I've had in a very long time up here. I'm very excited now to kind of map and scheme other sledding and skiing routes back here for when the time gets better. You know, who knows? Maybe we can put up like one of those rope poles where we could get pulled back up to the top. We could have our own little mini ski resort back here in the winter. Winter exists to remind you of the summer to send you deep within your soul and just take a good look. You know, all around the plants and buildings are wrapped in their snowy blanket, just waiting for the warm weather to come out of hiding, meditating in their own way. And sometimes that sun does come out and the snow does not seem to care. It sticks around anyways, making sure that you don't get too far ahead of yourselves, that you take that time to reflect. Think of the past year and the year to come. And for me, I try to use winters as a time to relax, you know, to give myself permission to not always be pressing forward on projects. But it's not always easy. You know, winter creates new projects itself. And this winter has been especially hard. It just seems colder than normal, snowier than ever. You know, things are breaking left and right. Projects aren't moving forward. I found myself on some days questioning why I'm here. And then I'll take a walk at sunset over fresh snow and just be renewed. You know, nothing is more beautiful than fresh snow, that you're the first one to take that route. It's just a pure adventure. And every year appears the same. It's a new route, it's a new path, it's a new adventure. And this coming one is no different. I'm so grateful for this journey that I found myself on. Each day feels like that fresh step into snow unknown, beautiful, and special. So I just want to say thank you all for coming along on this journey over the past two years. 
That support is the blanket that keeps me warm up here on cold days. And I'm super excited for the year to come, for the snow to melt off and for this hotel to exist. And so until then, I'm gonna try to enjoy this winter wonderland, get out there and play more and get ready for the big year ahead.